welcome, welcome to the stream. My name is Kat and you are on my art channel, See Nor Art. And tonight we're going to be, we're going to be working on a commission tonight. So you guys are going to get to hang out with me and we're going to not only just a commission, but something that's very special and dear to my heart. So I'm hoping to share a little bit of story, a little bit of the background of what I do for commissions. Just in case you were curious about what artists do and how sometimes we get commissions and everything else as well. So, hope you guys are having a fabulous Thursday. And welcome. Let me put this nearby. It's got the important information. All right. So I saw there was a cool cat. Hello, Reese. Hello, Mathersist. I'm really happy to see you guys in chat. I hope that your week has been going great. Hopefully... The shorter than normal week has been awesome. So hopefully that's, that's how it's going. So I bet you've noticed a little bit there is a, a picture somewhere in the corner of the screen. I don't know which corner it's in because I'm facing a camera in a different direction than you are. So yeah, there's a cute, cute puppy in the corner. Because tonight we're, we're going to be doing a commission, a very special tribute to a bull terrier called Gunner. And Gunner is pretty special, and I can't wait to tell you guys the reason why and all that good jazz. So I'm just going to wait just a little bit and talk more about like the process as an artist doing a um, pet portrait for me. This is the process that I do. So that way, when I get started talking to Gunner, hopefully I have a few more people with me. So, you know, because it is, it is really important for me to share this story with you guys because it makes me really happy. So, let me see how you guys are doing. I'm pretty sure I got sunburnt today. The sun is a pretty bright place, so you will get sunburnt. I've been doing that as well. <laughs> Hopefully you feel better soon. Just slather some aloe vera on it and you'll feel loads better. Um, that's the best thing to do for sunburns in my experience. So yeah. Okay, so pet portraits. How does one do it? If you're an artist, how do you do it? My suggestion is to, if you love pets, draw as many as them as you can. You got them in your house. You got neighbors that have them. You've got family that have them. Draw, 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 draw. And what's really fun about pet portraits in particular is that you can add a little bit of personality, especially if you get a chance to know who the animal was, what they meant to their owners, um, what kind of like family member that they were. You can add little special things to the portraits to make them special, um, make them mean a little bit more, and then hopefully bring happiness to whoever is receiving the portrait. Because when you spend the time to do a portrait for someone, um, it's really stinking special because whenever you buy artwork from an artist, you're getting a piece of that artist's heart because there's no way at least for me personally, there's no way that I can't not have that emotional attachment to my art and not want to put 110% of the best I can do at this very moment into it. So it's really ends up becoming something very special and something that I'm hoping, you know, makes means the world to the person I'm giving it to as much as it does for me. So let me talk about a little bit about this cute puppy called Gunner. Um, I met his owner, um, this is a tribute, so Gunnar is no longer with us, but his owner, Stephanie, um, and her husband a little over a year ago, and they are the most fantastic people that I, I've ever met. Sometimes you just meet people and you're like, these are really nice people, and they, they are, they're very nice people. Um, and I did some work for them last year for a very special cause, which I'll get into here in a little bit. And so she reached out to me again this year and was like, I would really be honored if you would make, um, do some more work for me and do a tribute to a puppy we had called Gunner. So what I did is not knowing very much about Gunner, I started doing research and with some, this is... This is something that I do. So when you're an artist, it's always good to do research. Do loads of research. So one of the things I did is um, I actually used a sketchbook. So sketchbooks are one of those things that when I was in college, they were like, please draw all the time and have a sketchbook and never go anywhere without a sketchbook. 
Did I do that in college? No. But do I do it now? Oh yes. Oh yes. So the first thing I did was when someone asks you something as moving as a tribute, I was like, let me double check what a tribute means. Because I, I actually don't know the reference to a tribute when it's not, you know. There's two different terms and I wanted to make sure that I understood in the context that it was meant to be. So tribute is an act, statement, or a gift is, that is intended to show gratitude, respect, or admiration. So in this respect, I, because Gunner's no longer here with us, um, I really wanted to do it in a way that showed gratitude and showed admiration for this puppy's life because he obviously meant the world to this couple and not knowing anything else about it, I just kind of like dove in and did some more research. So his name was Gunner. So the first thing I thought about was General Patton's Bull Terrier, which was Willie. When I was little, I thought Willie was the cutest puppy, still is the cutest puppy I'd ever seen. I loved reading about General Patton and about his dog and how he was the mascot. And you know, you he has such a big personality. I won't get into it too much because if you haven't had the chance to do any research about Willie or what he meant to General Patton, or to everyone who met him, it's totally worth the read. It's totally worth reading about, doing research about, um, watching videos about. It's worth your time. So when I looked up his information about Willie, because I was thinking about Gunner, um, I noticed that in some of the pictures, um, Gunner had a harness that had was red, white, and blue and had stars on it. So what I wanted to do was to kind of give him a little more, kind of like leaning back towards that military theme because it was, they said tribute. Um, military is in a way of like honoring somebody. He obviously meant a whole lot to someone. So I decided that I wanted to put a sun behind him because his sun has set on this world. And then I wanted to add stars because when you're a general, you have stars. Um, cause like General Patton was three star general and it made me think of stars in a way that, you know, maybe he was somebody's five star friend because every animal, especially if they're rescued, is a five star friend. You never expected to have them. You never expected to have the blessing, but they are a blessing and you're so grateful to have them in your life. So that's where I started from with this little, this little itty bitty sketch next to my donut dogs, which is another little thing I was getting into as well, um, is this tiny sketch here. And I did some time on it. Let me move this out over here. Oh no, I'm where I am right now, which is, I did some ink work. And um, this is where Gunner's at at the current moment. Uh, this kind of ink line work is very hard to do live on Twitch because it's hard to read chat and do line work this detailed. <laughs> so I did this off camera. But I am going to do the watercolor on camera because it's something that I feel confident that I can do that and read chat at the same time. So speaking of chat, let me go see what you guys are up to. So. The dog reminds me of the dog from Toy Story. Yes, the dog from Toy Story is also one of the more famous um, bull terriers. It's always good to do research in any discipline. It is, yep. Research I can do. Studying that never caught on with me. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is where we're at. Yeah, research is really important um, because it gives you an idea. It gives you ideas that you would have never thought of yourself. Um, if I hadn't done research for Gunner, um, looking back on Willie's life, um, I probably wouldn't have come up with a son because I looked at a lot of posters from World War II, especially the propaganda type posters. There was a lot of symbolism in those posters. So those are some of the ideas that I came up with and simplified down. So I've got my five stars from my friend. Um, I've got a little dog tag that says Gunner on it. And then I've got my line work here. 
So the one thing I want to do is I want to take some time to... Gunnar has some has beautiful tan. He's white and tan, and he's really gorgeous. So I got to make sure that I mark that down because I kind of... I had it underneath here, but I kind of lost it because... There's a lot of line work going on here, so I need to go back to the photo and find where his white muscle ends and his beautiful tan for a goat comes in. So give me just a moment. I'm going to look it up on my phone because to me, my screen for Gunner over there in the corner on my computer is really small and I want to make sure I can actually see him really well. Because he's also got a little bit of gray around his nose, a little bit of gray around the edging. He's very, very handsome boy. He is so stinking cute. He's also got a little gray around his lips as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a watercolor pencil and I'm just lightly drawing where it's supposed to go because the watercolor pencil will fade once I apply water so it won't be so I'm just gonna add this really quick So uh, what makes bull terriers so much fun is that they have very unique faces. They have gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful faces. I love, um, I love the proportions of bull terriers. They have such open, big personalities. They're very happy dogs in my experience. I haven't really met a bull terrier that isn't just the life of the party and just doesn't know a stranger and wants to be a friend. They're super loyal and they're they're definitely great family dogs. Terriers in general have great dispositions and are just they're just happy little little guys. They're so happy. So I'm just going to take some time, make sure I get this down. So there is some movement going on here. And for me as an artist, I love I love their noses. They've got the cutest noses. So they have got like these extra long muzzles and then they've got like a dip scoop, like right where their nose meets, like right here. They usually have like a little bit of a dip scoop. Some are more pronounced than others, but it's just so stinking cute. So what I'm doing here is just marking where that area is, where he has that little bit of the gray. That way I don't forget where it is.
So if you've never looked at dogs' lips, they're amazing. There's so many beautiful things that are going on. Um, so many beautiful things that help them be a dog and be able to have great noses and great sniffers, great discoverers of the land. Especially terriers because they are, um, most terriers are designed um, to be great sniffers. They're, they've got great instincts for hunting. They also have great instincts on really good noses, really good sniffers. I call them. some of that line work back in there so that way I can kind of and then I'm going to go in here and take my eraser and let you go over things There will be some line work left behind um, just naturally, but I'm going to try to minimize it as much as possible so when you see it in person, it almost has like a flawless quality to it. And if you're thinking to yourself, if you're looking at the picture and then looking at what I'm doing and you're kind of going, it doesn't look exact. There's, there is a reason why it doesn't look quite exact. Um, I wanted to give Gunner a halo. So, because I'm putting the sun behind him, normally you wouldn't be able to see the colors because he would just be like a perfect um, silhouette instead of being able to see the colors. So instead, I'm using my artistic license to still give him color, but I'm giving him like an outline of white or gold, depending on where it is. So I actually have a beautiful line that shows the top of where his head is. But I'm leaving that completely, I'm leaving that line completely alone. I'm not putting ink there. It's just gonna be the white of the paper. So that way he's glowing in his in his new place. Like he's glowing in heaven. So that's where that idea comes from. So the pencil that I use for line work underneath all of this, I always use a number four H pencil. Um, that's a very hard graphite. Um, it erases beautifully and even if I accidentally leave it behind or if it gets touched by watercolor which once it does that it's part of the piece I don't feel like it's distracting at all that way you can stay stay and hang out so I'm just gonna just kind of erase I don't have anything on my hands. Okay. Set my watercolor pencil here. That way I kind of know where my color is going. I know what's staying white. Although it won't stay white for very long because white is a beautiful color because it can reflect all kinds of colors. White is so much fun to paint with. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to flip them upside down because we're going to work on the largest part of watercolor, which is going to be the sun behind him because having that set there and having that set color there will really help me with everything else I do. So, and if I don't get finished with Gunner t tonight, I will keep updating you and everything like that. I'm just excited because I did ask, um, I asked Stephanie, who uh, hired me for this, if I could do this on Twitch, and she said yes, and I'm super excited about it. So I got a chance to talk to her. Um, she helps 
a really great organization. Let me see if I can find it really quick. And my mods will also put a link to their Facebook page here in chat. So she is um, a part of Helping Bull Terriers Worldwide, um, which is a great organization, which is helping all kinds of rescue groups, not only in the US, but around the world, wherever they can. Um, they help them with funding and making sure that they have the money that they need to do rescues. So if you've ever been interested in helping out or have always wanted to either help people rescue bull terriers or perhaps just get involved with an organization to help fundraise, please take the time, go to their Facebook page, check them out. They're an amazing group of people who are helping in a lot of different groups. Um, Gunnar himself, he was part of the rescue group that's local here. And let me make sure I'm going to read it so that way I don't mess up. It's called the Blue Ridge Bull Terrier Rescue Group, which is the um, one of the ones that works here in Indiana. And Gunnar was one of their rescues. And that's how he came to be a part of Stephanie's family is because he was a surrender. And instead of the um, instead of the option of putting him down, um, they were contacted and Stephanie was contacted and they reached out to her and she's like, I'd rather take him than have him put down because, you know, I understand that surrendering you your animal or pet is extremely emotionally charged and sometimes you're just in a situation where you can't afford something or you just, the animal is too much which is something I often hear quite a bit. Um, and so it's really great that we have people like Stephanie and like these organizations that are gonna help these terriers and also in return, they're helping support the rescue community. You should always try to make sure that you rescue or adopt an animal if you can. So that way we can give good dogs like Gunner great, great homes. So let me go ahead and paint his son really quick before I tell you a little bit more about... So like I said, I started this commission piece not knowing um, a whole lot about Gunner or his story. So I want to paint his son first before I tell you about his story because you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty special. It's really sweet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply a... I'm going to do a wet on wet technique with watercolor, which means I'm going to put down clean water onto my paper. And what I really want to focus on is that, I know you can't see it, but there is a line of where his head is right here in his ear. And I want to make sure that that is good, crisp, clean, because I'm going to leave that area just past it white. So. So I'm going to puddle water, that's what I call it. I'm going to puddle some water on here so that way the paper stays wet and active for a little bit longer. That way we can apply a wash right on top of this. And I really don't want the wash to be like a perfect solid color. I want it to have life and have variations. I don't really want it to be perfect because this is a tribute and um, life is kind of messy and being a puppy dog is not about being clean. It's about finding finding those happy moments and barking at a mailman or chasing a squirrel or digging a hole in your mama's flower bed. That's you know what puppies are all about. They bring you so much joy through their personalities, and um, I know that I miss my own puppy a whole heck of a lot. I had her for 15 years, and that's why I love doing pet portraits, is because, um, especially if it's for someone who's no longer here, is because I understand. I understand what it means to lose a friend like that, because nothing can replace someone who 
doesn't care about how your day went, doesn't care about how bad things are. All they care about is that your presence is in the house and they're happy to see you and they're excited to be able to just wag their tails around you and just give you, especially puppies, give you doggy kisses and because you hung the moon to them. You hung the moon and the stars and you're their best friend in the whole wide world. And there's very, very few instances in life where you can have that kind of friendship. It's something, something to be treasured for sure. I'm taking a moment to look through my colored shirts, through my watercolors, because I really wanted to use gold. And I have a gold. Here we go. There's my gold. Just gonna get a little wet on my palette here. I'm gonna really load up my brush. Rinse out really quick. Add a little water. Sorry if you guys are listening with your headphones. I know that the squirting of water is like right next to your ear and I apologize. There we go. So I'm making I'm making a big old puddle off to the side. And so what I'm gonna do is that water, watercolor loves to follow water. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start adding. Color all the way around. Making sure I grab, not my clean water, because I've already put color down, but I'm just gonna go And you can already start to see, it's very light, but it's already starting to travel all the way across because it's just following the water I already put down. And that's what makes wet on wet technique super duper fun. I always love, always love doing this. So I'm just adding more water on top of it. So it is going to be, it's going to be a gloopy mess. I'm going to have to be really sure to make sure that I don't stick my hands in the middle of it. However, as it starts to dry though, it's really going to take on some really beautiful qualities. It's going to have like, oh gosh, it's going to be really gorgeous. So I can do all kinds of fun, like little drops of water to make all these beautiful effects. So that way when you see the watercolor in person and you take some time to like take a really close look at it, you get to see all these really fun little specks of color. Make sure I mix. I 
And I love this color of yellow is because it's like that burnt sunset just fading on the horizon. It's such a really pretty color. So I've got a little bit of a puddle happening right here in the middle of my middle of my sun and I don't know if I like it will continue to puddle that way but I can always just move the color around and then I can also tilt it back the other way as well that way it also distributes the color a little evenly and you can definitely see it now that my paper is like oh my gosh you gave me lots of water it's doing a little bit of a ripple but that's okay um, ripples are just fine I know that I put a lot of water on here, but it's it's creating a beautiful texture, which is exactly what I was going for. And so now you can see that beautiful white outline right here. So now let me flip Gunner around really quick so you can kind of see it. So now his head looks proportional to the picture that you see on the screen. And that's all because if he really was standing in front of such a bright source of light, he would actually have a halo, which is perfect because it is a tribute. So he is in doggy heaven. So that's the other reason to have this beautiful white line. And I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it completely white is for that reason is because it's his halo. It's his beautiful son. He's in a happy place running around with a bunch of uh, his buddies and having a good time and just being a happy puppy. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more, a little bit droplets of color in here. So the nature of watercolor is that it looks super saturated right now, but I always know that watercolor will always dry lighter than when I apply it down when it's wet and it's just because of the medium of water. It's always going to make it, um, instead of being it opaque, it will be more transparent. So that white of the paper will still shine through um, and this will turn into really beautiful white golden and these pigments that I dropped in here at the last minute are just going to continue to spread because they are following all those water molecules sitting on top of the paper. So they're, they're doing what they're designed to do. So I'm going to rinse my brush out really quick. And I'm going to take just a smidgen of time to work on Gunner's collar really quick before I get into everything else is because I want to stay as far away from this beautiful sun right here just because if I start getting into his face I, I know me I might smudge my watercolor I want this to set up a little bit more I'm also going to keep an eye on it um, right now it's see how easily my pigments are moving um, I'm gonna wait until it gets a little less shiny I'm gonna drop some water on it too to kind of create some more textures in there as well so this would be a perfect place to go ahead and start on my stars so let me chuck shots really quick so it looks like I've been missing some How big is the size dimensions of the material that you're working on? I normally work with um, a 9 by 12 so it's slightly bigger than your average computer paper. Um, it's really great because my scanner is also 9 by 12 so that's why I normally work 
in this uh, dimensions. But watercolor paper comes in all different sizes. I could work bigger. I just don't have a scanner bed that's big enough to scan for bigger work. Just like Matthew said. <laughs> Is this the most ink work that you've done for a piece before? Um, so I have done more ink work for pieces before, but like um, I was mentioning earlier, so um, for to do this kind of like detailed ink work and line work, I end up zoning out like more than I do so here on Twitch normally. I have to go to a place where like I'm just in it. Um, so this line work, for example, took me quite a bit of time. It's hard to, to be honest, I don't know how long it took. All I know is that I know that at one, I don't remember when I started, but at one point um, I got into it and four hours passed by and I didn't notice because that's how it goes with line work. So I am getting a lot faster with line work because I've been doing it now for a couple of years. So when I first started, this type of intense line work would take me weeks just because like my hand wasn't used to it, but I am getting faster at it. So I don't know, couldn't tell you the exact amount of time. The only thing I remember is I looked at the clock in the middle of my line work and then looked at the clock again and four hours had poofed. But I don't know where they went, so. Hello, Lady Boa. Hi, hi, how are you doing? And hello, Win Boa. I like your snake frog, snake frog. It's always good to see you guys. Hopefully everything's going good for you this evening. A boa joke. What do snakes use to cut paper? A CC horse. That's great. I love it. What is a snake's favorite subject? History. I also love that as well. What do you call a snake that tells jokes? Monty Python. <laughs> I miss having a puppy. I miss having a puppy. Terribly. I do. You can come cuddle puppy boa. I always do. Puppy boa has a very special place in my heart, lady boa. I'm multitasking between several things this evening. That is fine. I'm just taking a moment to let my paint dry and read chat really fast. It's okay if you go silent. Looming is always okay. You can always lurk, as I call it. So. Good evening, Lumos. Good evening. Well, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, so I'm letting this beautiful sun dry for this pet portrait that I'm working on. Especially, Lumos, since you're brand new, I'll just use you to kind of go into the story about this cute little puppy. So earlier, um, in my stream, I went ahead and talked about um, some of my commission work and some of the research I went behind. So for this commission, um, I've worked with this wonderful lady and her husband before. Her name's Stephanie and I, I adore her and what they do. She's part of a larger organization. Um, let me read the name so I get it right. Helping Bull Terriers Worldwide um, is an orga a wonderful organization that helps fund rescue groups for Bull Terriers. Um, not only here in the U.S., but worldwide as well. And she um, reached out to me because she's she wanted to um, commission me for a pet portrait, which is something she did last year as well. And I didn't know anything about Gunner, but one of the things she asked for is she asked for a tribute to Gunner. And she said, just like that, I want a tribute to Gunner. And so I looked up the word tribute, and I really wanted to embrace that word because it was very powerful to me and so looking through the pictures of Gunner which he's he's that cute little picture in the corner um, I noticed that he had a red white and blue um, harness with stars on it and um, hearing the word tribute often makes me think of military and tributing someone who has served and the word Gunner also brought back to that little harping on that idea of Willie which was General Patton's bull terrier because it's a bull terrier why I can't help myself I just think of General Patton and his terrier because it's I loved 
I still do. It's still the cutest dog. Bull terriers are adorable. I'm just gonna say that right now. I'm gonna say it a lot. Bull terriers are cute. Um, so I have a son setting behind him because his son is set. Gunner is no longer here with us anymore. And um, I gave him five stars on his collar because I figured he was somebody's five star friend. And um, I got a chance to talk to Stephanie earlier this evening and she told me a little bit more about Gunner. And Gunner is a, uh, a rescue terrier that um, she helps foster and rescue. And at the end of his life, her and her husband basically took Gunner in and gave him a beautiful home. So Gunner was one of those um, situations where he was surrendered um, because he was for for the reasons why you surrender your pet, which is always a difficult thing for any family to reach to that decision. Luckily, though, um, Stephanie and like-minded people like her wanted to rescue Gunner instead of putting him down, which was beautiful and wonderful. So Gunner originally went to Stephanie. They gave him training and sent him up to Chicago to another foster family in hopes that he would find a forever home. And when... Um, he is a young pupper, so he like young puppers do. He got excited and it was a little much. So he came back to Stephanie. And so they were like, all right, we'll bring you back. We'll give you some more training. They gave him some more training, fell in love with him. He's a really good puppy. And they were getting ready to adopt him out again. And being who he is, he just had an episode where he nipped someone, which is one of those things that you can't let your dogs do is you can't let them nip at anyone um, because it's something that you can't really control um, and you really don't want it to happen, especially to another fellow human being because that's always a scary experience all the way around. The human was fine it was, and it was handled beautifully, but being a rescue dog, they went ahead and took him in for behavior testing and uh, a physical test. And his behavior testing went out perfect. He was just, just the most beautiful sweetheart. But when his um, physical tests came back, they found out that he had um, a neurological disorder, which just made him have sudden episodes of aggression. It's not something that they could plan on. Um, Gunner himself couldn't handle it. It was just who he was as an individual, as a puppy. So, you know, I'm trying not to cry, but, um, so they had to make the really hard decision to let him go and put him down because when your pupper can't help but have like episodes of aggression, you can't keep him safe or keep anyone else safe. So I can't imagine letting go of your puppy that way. Um, it doesn't mean that Gunner wasn't a good dog because he really was. I could tell in her voice that she loved Gunner and Gunner meant the world to her and her husband and her family. And he was just a good puppy. It's just one of those things, you know? And to find someone who can, you know, have a dog that you know has a neurological disorder, they can't help it, but still love them where they're at, that's pretty special. And what a blessing to Gunnar to have family that loved him that much. Loved him where he was, loved him where he was at, and gave him the best life that could ever give a dog. He had more life with them than he ever expected to have. And that's what makes people like Stephanie and rescue groups, not only for bull terriers, but for rescue groups, for dogs, cats, all kinds of different animals, so special. It's because you have people who are willing to give animals a second chance because they can't speak for themselves. They can't ask for help, but us giving them that help just is wonderful in so many different ways. So yeah, before I start crying, I better start doing arts again. So I'm gonna do some arts while I'm gonna try to not get all teary-eyed on you guys. So I'm gonna do his collar really quick. I'm gonna do a red, white, and blue because it is a tribute and he's a sweetheart. So. Breezy. It's good to see you. Oh. 
A tribute to celebrate life. Exactly, Lumos, exactly. Like I was talking about earlier, there's something more special than having having a pet, you know? Having someone just be super excited to have you come home and you hung the moon and the stars to them. Yeah, I will have to say this from a voice of experience. Um, I've been, I've worked for a vet clinic before when I was much younger. It was one of the very first jobs that I had was working for a vet clinic. So um, I've been on that side of losing pets, like helping others ha have that moment, that quiet moment with your puppy and having to let go and everything. Um, and I've also been on the other side of having to make that decision to let go of your puppy. And it's, it's something that you never want to do, but it's something that at times you just have to do it. So it's nice for me to be able to do this for someone else. Um, because for me personally, um, after losing my puppy, I couldn't draw my puppy for a year or more because I used to draw her like when I go through my older sketchbooks um, you'll see my puppy Roxy show up continuously in my sketchbooks because she was always my little shadow she was always there and so there's sketches after sketches and um, I've never been able to bring myself to do a tribute for her because it's just I'm too emotionally charged about it I'm too close but what's wonderful about Gunnar and kind of knowing his story is that um, it's allowing me to be able to give that to someone else, you know, like it means Gunnar meant the world to them, you know, and I'm glad to be able to help, you know, like give him a moment in the sun, like immortalize him through art, you know, um, and for him just being who he was, which was bringing joy to people which is just so sweet. So, at least that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping when it's all said and done.
So I'm using like a faded red and faded blue um, because um, one of the most, one of the things that I could never let go of from having my own dog was having, I still have her collar. And um, when dogs, like when you've had dogs for a while, their collars or their harnesses get worn and they have like that nice, that worn feeling to them. You know, like your favorite clothes get worn like, and then they're just like the perfect softness. They're, they just, they have that, you know, that look of being, this is my favorite thing in the world. And so I wanted to give that here is to kind of give like, it's a little faded, but it's still, it's still loved. It's still beautiful in its own way. Animal angels who take in these. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I believe in that too, Lomas. That um, angels definitely are are definitely in, in pets. Those little angels you never expected to have in your life, but have the strongest impact. We have a lot of sketches of Roxy. It was exceptionally hard when she was gone. Yeah. So Gunner's story really hits close to home with us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Roxy was um, my little my little rescue. Um, she wasn't a bull terrier. She was a, a sama sama. <laughs> Heinz fifty seven. Whatever you want to call it. She was just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, definitely had some lab in her and some sort of German Shepherd in her and uh, yeah she was she was my best friend for 15 years and she was a sweetheart she uh, she had a lot of energy as a puppy um, and uh, she was quite a handful <laughs> to say to say the very least uh, we both learned a lot um, from going to doggy obedience school together. I think that's what really cemented our friendship, our relationship, was learning um, learning that each other had a job to each other. Like, she had a job with me and I had a job with her and um, that really helped, you know, give us the foundation of, like, who we were to each other. We were each other's best friends. And uh, she went with me to college and was around me for 15 years. Always, like I said, always my shadow. I was never, I was never alone with Roxy. I was rarely alone anyways, but I don't know. She was always in my studio with me. Um, when I was in college, she went to all my after, not during school hours, but if I ever went to the studio after hours, she always went with me and just sat in the studio with me and while I painted and um, she moved across country with me as well. Like when I moved to Indiana, she was one of the things I brought with me is um, we actually drove across country instead of flying from Texas to Indiana because we had Roxy. So she, and she loved car rides. Like that was her jam. She always enjoyed getting in the car and um, getting to explore new places. Truck stops were her favorite because she was, 
She didn't, Roxy didn't realize that she was a dog. I think she thought she was honestly human because she was always excited. If she could meet someone else, she would be really happy about it. Um, and uh, she became best friends with our orange kitty, Newton. So New when Newton was a kitten, um, Roxy was his best bud. Like, I may have had Roxy as a shadow, but Newton was her shadow. And uh, so, so when we lost Roxy, it was really hard not only on us, but it was hard on our cat, Newton, as well. Which, you know, further cements that, you know, animals do have feelings. They do feel things. They have a range of emotions that either match our own or outmatch our own in empathy. That's why when I meet people like Stephanie and I hear stories about people willing to rescue animals, it just really touches my heart because um, I've seen it for myself. I've seen animals love each other and, you know, and love other humans too. You know, it's really, it's pretty special when you have an animal in your life. Okay, I think my sun is almost dry. And so I've got this nice little like beautiful spot going on right here, but it's like right above his eyes, so it's perfect. I'm not gonna touch it, I love it. I love it so much. There, there are things that happen in watercolor that you can't plan, but they're beautiful when they happen. You're just like, my hands are off. I'm just letting it happen, not even questioning it. All right, so I've got the collar all done. I'll come back later and add some silver to the dog tag and to right here. Let me double check to see what time it is. Okay, perfect. I never once heard Roxy complain, except during thunderstorms, poor girl. Yeah, Roxy did not like thunderstorms or lightning, or not lightning, but fireworks. I always dreaded <laughs> New Year's and 4th of July with a e every year because my dog would just shake. Like she would shake so bad, she'd shake the whole bed. She would just lean up against it and shake the whole bed. And there was, it was the worst because there was nothing I could do to comfort her because the only thing she needed was it to be quiet and I couldn't make it quiet for her. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do now is, um, before I make that beautiful tan color, I'm gonna go ahead and, since Gunner has a little bit of gray, I'm gonna look at a couple of his pictures to kind of like look at and see where that beautiful gray is hanging out. He also has a spot on his nose. I think it's so cute. I love little terriers that have like a little freckle on their nose. It's, it's a thing I've noticed, um, you know, after doing uh, a pet portrait last year for, um, for Stephanie is that the one that I did for her last year for one of her rescues also had a freckle on her nose. It was so cute. I love that freckle. But you guys know I love freckles because I put freckles on everything. So, okay. Look at that face. That sweet, sweet face. Heart. Such cute. Cute, cute. Okay, getting totally distracted. Gunner is adorable. Such a cute puppy. Okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my paints gray. And I already have the black watercolor pencil down. Um, so I'm going to pick up paints gray. And I'm just going to 
lightly put my brush into this blue that I was using here, which was a mixture of phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Um, Cause I do, I want, I don't want the gray to be warm. I, I want it to be cool. We have all this beautiful warm color right here. So I'm gonna make the grays just a little cooler so that way I can bring more warmth through this beautiful, he has a like gorgeous tan fur. So I'm gonna play with my colors a little bit. Use, use my phone to look. Oh, I did notice the freckle. I put the freckle there. I'm so smart. and take that color and pull it down into his nose. If you are a puppy owner and have never taken the time to look at your puppy dog's nose, you should really look at their noses. They're the most beautiful folding, like, like our noses have like a shape and they rarely like, and they're pretty straightforward, but like the way that a dog's nose like bends in and curves around, it's just so pretty. It's this beautiful, delicate instrument. And to know that they have such great sniffers, um, it's just really cool. It's really, look at your dog from front and notice the shape and then have your dog's profile and then notice that shape. And it's like your brain is like, wait, I noticed this shape in the front, but that shape isn't reflected on the side at all. And it's because of the way that it folds and how it just functions. It's really cool. Anyways, it's hard to explain, but if you have a puppy, look at its nose from the front and then look at its nose from the side and notice the differences between the two. Cause it's just really, it's very interesting to me um, as an artist. So. I forget the freckle. Somewhere. Oh, I know where I got it from. I was like, somewhere I got paint on my hand. It's because I'm continuously five years old and I will forever show up to formal functions with paint all over my fingers. And my clothes will always be covered in paint. I can always tell, it's really funny, I can always tell what's my favorite clothes in my closet because they have some sort of paint, ink, on them. And of the variety that does not come out. Doggy lips. Doggy lips are the best. Dogs also have beautiful lips.
I'll come back in and um, even though I don't really necessarily have the information on this um, photo that I love so much, um, there is um, a variety of pink. We have the pale pink of um, his gum line here and then there's a deeper pink right here where you have these, I'm sure it has a name, but I've actually, I need to look it up now. Um, I'm sure that this part of their lip has a certain name. The part that has like these beautiful like ridges and texture. Um, the part where if you love on your dog and ruffle their lips, they kind of get the suctional um, out of whack and they go, they're so cute when you do that to dogs. Um, they don't appreciate it much, so I don't suggest doing it often, but it's really cute. Um, but yeah. So when you like smoosh their faces or give them like mess with their lips, um, some of that section is right here and these beautiful little ripples are just really gorgeous. Um, almost, they look, have like a fern like shape. So I'm sure like for most things with dogs, I'm sure it's a great way to hold like taste or like a scent or a smell is a great way to trap. Um, just like the way their noses are built are perfect ways to like trap scents and smells into it um, because that is that's that's their job that's what they do they, they f see the world not only through their eyes but they see it through their noses and through sense of smell and taste So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this beautiful tan, make a beautiful gold tan. Peanut butter lips? Yeah. Yeah, you can feed um, dogs peanut butter and they, they really love peanut butter, but it sometimes gets stuck. And like in their lips or on the roof of their mouth and they make the funniest faces they're super cute <laughs> yeah when I take care of um, puppy boa that's my favorite part is to give puppy boa his peanut butter because he loves his peanut butter just stick it in a Kong and he's happy camper So I'm going to do a little more saturated in color, just because we do have this beautiful sun set behind him as well. Probably start with the lightest areas first of his face and then work my way back. So I have a spare piece of paper off to the side and I'm just kind of like double checking to make sure the color, the little color puddle that I made over here is pretty close. I can always come back and add a little bit to it, but it's hard to take away once I put large washes down. So, all right, let's see, where are we at? We're about 116. Okay, so I currently have very blue water. So that means that I do need to switch it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really quick break just so I can get some fresh water before I start this beautiful fur that I'm going to put in here as well. Um, so let my finds that little card. Let's be right back. I will be right back guys. I just need some fresh water. So um, commercial time. Commercial.
need. <laughs> Take a girl. Honey. You see the full stretch. Blue water, no more. I actually have clear water now. Okay, let me switch this back. Oh, there you are. Hello. I am back. I have clear water now. And with clear water, I get lighter washes. So I think I'm gonna do his fur in a couple of washes. So washes just simply means that I'm gonna apply a thin layer of color, let it dry, and then come back and add more color where it's needed. Um, especially, um, you can see that there's some beautiful lighting going on in this picture, which kind of lends into having this beautiful sun behind him. Um, hello, Newton. Sorry, distracted by cute kitty. Hello, Newt Newt. How are you, buddy? I think before I do that though, I'm gonna see if I can just really gently, I've got, I've got some watercolor pencil on the edge right here. I'm just gonna lightly see if I can erase, erase that really quick. I need to decide which one, Th this one, this one I'm going to do, okay. So I'm rinsing out my brush just because um, when I put this color here, it's kind of, it's a little muddy right here, but this is what I wanted to happen um, because there will be natural, um, especially with puppy dogs, um, some, I don't know about Gunner, but some puppy dogs, when they have like these little gray patches right here, they'll actually be a change in pigmentation and their skin as well, especially if they're very fair skinned. Um, so I don't mind that. I just want to make sure that when I start moving up through here and there's not as much gray coming around, um, it kind of stays a little more pure in color. And what I'm doing is I'm following my line work um, because where your brush goes gives it natural like curve and some texture to it as well. And I'm starting out super duper light in color. So like I said, I'm gonna come back in and add more color as we go along. I just wanna make sure because you can always add color with watercolor. It's a little harder to take away, which is just fine. So like right through here, it's gonna have like a little touch of gray. That's okay, because there's gonna be a big, that's my clean water. This is my dirty water. See what I have to remind myself of. This, this is where I wash my brush. There's gonna be, um, especially like right here. So his beautiful, like this part of his cheekbone leading up to his ear, which is where some of his muscles, his tendons would attach to his jaw. Um, this is gonna be all in shadow. 
So um, it's okay if I have this gray here, it's because when I lay another shadow color on top of it, it's just gonna blend in beautifully with that as well. The only thing is, is I'm making sure that I don't touch his halo, this beautiful halo that's supposed to just stay pure white. Um, I had this watercolor teacher. She was very good at what she did. Um, she's she always um, told us um, to paint as if you were building the structure. So to be very mindful how you paint. So like if you're painting, for example, you're painting a mountain. You can't just paint a mountain like from one end to the other, like in a horizontal stroke. You got to think about like, where are the valleys? Um, where's the peaks? What direction is the mountain going? And the same thing for animals as well. How does how does this connect to the rest of him? So this is his cheekbone. It has tendons that connect to his jaw bones that help him chew. So you want to give that direction. And that's where a lot of my line work is inspired from is just looking at the structure of animals and thinking about like, if this was a topographical map, kind of how would this look? It's not an exact science um, because there's definitely that artistic flair to it all. But um, I, I like to think about those things. I like to know the structure of the animals that I'm drawing. That's what makes bull terriers so beautiful and so much fun to paint um, is because if you ever get the chance to meet a bull terrier and you get a chance to meet their owner, um, of course I always ask the owner's permission because every dog is different, but get a chance to just really give their heads and their ears like a big O scourge, like scratch all along behind their ears and like get a chance to scratch down their necks because they have a very beautiful muscular neck and the way that their their ears are on their head and the way that their face is so beautiful that it's very chiseled they're very handsome dogs they have very chiseled faces very regal um and they're just getting to meet um a bull terrier and getting to pet and love on them like Oh my gosh. Besides how cute they are with all their cute, very, it doesn't really matter what age they are. They just have lots of like cute energy. Um, they're just, they're beautiful animals. The structure is just gorgeous. So if you are interested in art and you're interested in painting animals, um, if you can, if you can meet the animal and pet them and um, get to like watch videos, observe how they move, um, observe what happens to their faces when they bark, when they don't bark, um, get a chance to just really look at how their, how their bodies and their fur changes depending on what light they're in. So it always amazes me, um, especially getting to observe my own pets, um, how they look completely different, depending on where they are, depending on the situation they're in. Um, they can take on different qualities altogether. So I'm just gonna lighten this up really, really quick. It's pretty light to begin with, and I'm just gonna lighten it up. All right. This is a really nice tan base layer, and then I'll come in and really start adding layers to darken it up and then I'll be able to add shadows on top of that. Got a little bit of gray. That is okay. Let me rinse this out really quick. Oh, 
we have a dad joke. I'm glad I know sign language. It's pretty handy. And I want to say thank you. I used to know how to say like, hello, this is where the bathrooms are. It's been a while. It's been a hot minute. I don't really remember anymore. Those are also important things to know how to sign. <laughs> hello, how are you? This is how you get to the bathrooms. So I'm taking a hot moment to think about where is my um, lightest lights versus my darkest darks. Um, I wanted to get the base color down so that way it was there, but now I'm going to go back in and really start adding colors. So with the light behind him, I'm going to really start adding some deeper um, colors. Of course, right here, like I talked about, his cheekbone right here, um, underneath this ridge here, um, and then. A lot of the eye is hitting the sun, this is hitting the sun, this is in shadow, that's why my grays are super dark. Um, and especially like in the ear here, I'm gonna add some pinks and then add some more darks in here as well. Especially as we're going back to these folds here, this is like in real deep darkness. And then even down, thinking in the future, it's down on the neck. Um, so see this? line that I have going through here. So right where his jugular would be, um, some of their major arteries flow right through here. Um, from here on back, that's all gonna be in shadow as well. So this nice wrapping around, that's why there's this beautiful line work edge here. Um, and then I'm not gonna touch anything up here. It's gonna stay white because it's being reflected by the light over here. And then of course we'll um, darken the collar because the collar is super bright right now um, and if it really wasn't shadow it would be darker so we're going to keep this edge really light and then we're going to put a shadow back here and darken them up so i may not get that done in 30 minutes but that's okay at least you know the direction i'm going in and this is something i needed to work on anyway so we're we're together and we're working on it together so for commission pieces i'm always going to take as much time as I need, just because this means a lot to me. So. So this is where like the really slow part happens, but that's okay. You guys get, kind of get to learn about the, the layers and the, how many layers it takes to bring something um, up through just gradual colors. I want to kind of go back into that gold I was using behind and kind of like dip that into. So I want to enrich the color before I put a shadow color on top of it because I want that original deep color to show through. So I'm adding my gold to my yellow ochre because yellow ochre is a beautiful, beautiful color. I love yellow ochre. So I'm just adding that a little bit of this color into it, into where the places we're going to add the shadow to. So when you have a bright, bright white here, the trick to make it feel even brighter is to put a darker color right next to it because it'll trick your eye into thinking that is super bright, it's super hot. Um, so, so we're going to add this beautiful gold color into the shadows and I'm just taking that time to follow 
the line work that I already have here. And see how this looks more bright white than this because your eyes are tricking you just like um, let me see if I can grab a piece of paper it's all right here I always got paper I always got paper so when you cover up when you cover up the Sun like this this appears brighter to you than here and that's just because your eyes are trained to see there's um, when you have more saturation that makes the contrast higher makes it much more brighter makes it pop same thing as if I cover all this up then you read this as a hotter brighter white even though the color of the paper has not changed you're just tricking your eyes into seeing that change because Human eyeballs are fascinating. It's fascinating how we view the world and we all view it differently. We all see it differently. So what I see may not be what you see. Because um, some people are slightly colorblind, so, or some people are colorblind. So how they see the world will be completely different from how I see it. I'm learning to have a coworker who's deaf. She's an amazing, amazing artist. Oh, that's really cool. It's always fun to have someone who knows sign language teach you sign language. I used to work at a children's, the Children's Museum here in Indy. And, um, you know, part of my job was to talk to everyone. Um, and I always loved meeting families that signed because it made me realize how much um, more expressive sign language is. Like where we, you and I can have a conversation, but the level of like attentiveness and the level of like hand gestures and like their whole bodies are a part of their language. So their entire body is telling you a story when they sign to you. Um, it's just like, it is an experience that, um, I don't know, it stuck with me even now. Like, um, I found it, it was so fascinating to me. It was fascinating to have that opportunity to know a little bit of sign, but also learn how to communicate to someone who is deaf and sees the world differently. So like do a music program for is small um, small children you know that are only like five or younger and have them experience music through vibration versus like singing together so your participation is different you get to do dancing and um, feeling the world through touch um, which is just so cool it's so cool to be a part of those learning experiences so just because they're really special
grabbing my clean water. I'm like, don't stick your brush in your clean water. If your brush has pigment on it, stick it in your dirty water if it hasn't changed that color. <laughs> hard lessons, hard lessons to learn. Just like, don't drink your watercolor water. It's also a bad idea. That's why I put my water cups are old um, containers for yogurt. It's because when I see a yogurt container, I don't automatically think, oh, I could take a drink out of this. Because <laughs> that's not something I would take a drink out of. So one of the things is that I want this color, but not nearly this bright a saturation, but I want to pull it up over this beautiful line work that I have here. So I'm just going to dip my brush into clean water. Not too much though. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to brush and see how I made that line completely disappear. but it's not nearly as saturated here as it is down here at the bottom. And if I just wanted to bump up that saturation at the bottom, I just apply ink, ink excuse me, pigments at the bottom, just like that. And so it creates it, but it, then it smooths it out, smooths it out a little bit more. I've really fallen in love with um, this um, brush is called Black Velvet. It's their silver um, and they're really nice brushes. They hold on to a, a nice amount of water, a nice amount of pigment. So you can go, you can just basically just not have to worry about keep applying pigment to the brush because it's holding on to those pigments so beautifully. So what I'm doing is um, I'm making sure that I kind of like push some of the pigments out of the end of the brush onto my Yupo paper, which kind of is like repels water a little bit. So that way I can make sure that I'm not applying too much pigments, especially since I'm getting closer to where I said I would identify my hot. This is where the lightest color would be because I'm kind of making light change because like I said this would be um, if you actually had a sun behind you you wouldn't be able to see any kind of texture at all so I'm bending it and giving it more light like you see in the picture where you have like these beautiful like facets of light hitting his face and um, that beautiful halo that he has around too so let me dip into some water let's this around on his beautiful eyes. Try to stay away from that gray a little bit. I don't really want the gray anywhere except where it is. Add some color right behind the eye. Oops, just splash water all over me. That's a-okay. Lazy Bob, Wooden Bow's car is running. Good, I'm glad. Go catch it. <laughs> Hello, Reese. Welcome back with a dad joke. I adopted my dog from a blacksmith. As soon as we got home, he made a bolt for the door. That's really great. When I was little, speaking of dogs who made bolts for the door, when I was little, we had this dog named Sunshine. And she was this itty bitty tiny, she wasn't itty bitty. She was like a medium sized dog. A Asama. I had no idea what, what she was. I don't know what breed she was. But she had what my mom termed as Wanderlust. 
real bad. Meaning that she wanted to be everywhere except home. So, um, she always cracked me up because if she thought she could dig out of the yard, she would. If she thought she could run away from you or you weren't holding onto her leash hard enough, she would. She'd bolt. And my brother and I spent many a time running through cactuses, mesquite, across fields, and she would just like, even though she's a medium sized dog, she only, she wasn't very tall, but this dog could run as fast as any deer I've ever seen. And she would like leap and bound and we would chase her. And she would just keep running unless we brought out her favorite thing in the world, which was at the time we had this um, big, huge suburban. And we would take the Suburban every week because we lived out in the country and there's no trash service out in the country. So every week we'd load up the Suburban with our weeks of trash and drive to the dump. And that was Sunshine's favorite thing to do. So she would like... So it got to the point where basically we would chase the kids, would chase her through the fields and through the back country, the scrubland of New Mexico. And so that way my mom could get in the Suburban and she could see us kids and she would drive along behind us on whatever road and we would herd Sunshine towards the Suburban because all my mom had to do was open the door and Sunshine would hop right in happy as a clam because she was like, yay, I'm going for a car ride. And she was really happy about the whole experience. We couldn't keep her home. We just loved her for where she was and chased her when we could and made sure she stayed out of trouble. So, she was a good dog, though. She was a sweetheart. She had a big old heart. She really loved pecans because we had a pecan tree in our backyard. There was, and she really loved turtles. And not in the nice way. She really liked turtles. She liked turtles and tortoises. So. But she was a good, she was a good puppy. Okay. Used all my color, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna keep just want a little more saturation, so I'm gonna make another. Used all my my puddle, my puddle of color. So I'm just gonna go back in here and add just a smidgen more. I'm gonna get my pictures. Make sure I'm not going terribly too far, and I'm not going terribly far. I will need to start adding pink though before I forget. It looks like these puppy's eyes were cute and brown. Cute and adorable. Looks like we also have some pink around the nose. Super duper cute. until you pulled up in the truck and then she was done. Yep, she was done running at that point. <laughs> she thought we were going to the dump, her favorite place. She really liked going on those car trips. She was a good puppy. She lived for a long time too. She was super senior citizen puppy. Yeah, my mom found sunshine in the middle of the road bunch of cars honking at her nobody like just a like a puppy puppy nobody would stop and get out of their car and pick up this poor puppy in the middle of the street but my mom did my mom brought her home and that was that so my mom has a huge heart for animals I think that's where I I get it from it's because there wasn't there isn't a time in my childhood that I can remember that my mom wasn't bringing something home that we weren't trying to, whether it be a kitten or, or some kind of like 
even just like basic wildlife, just bringing it home so that way we can just get it a good meal so that way we could just release it back where we found it. Did that for um, some geckos and not geckos, um, all kinds of different animals, turtles, tortoises. Sometimes we say hello to snakes. Mostly we left snakes alone. Got to learn the good ones from the bad ones. Definitely left alone the rattlesnakes. They were fine. They didn't need any help. We had lots of cats, lots of dogs, bunny rabbits, horses, <laughs> rats, you name it, fish. It's a big old, big family of animal lovers. It's a big improvement huh? from where we started to where we are now. It's big, huge leaps and bounds. Okay, I have 10 minutes left. Okay, I think what I wanna do is with my last 10 minutes, I wanna add the cute little pink here and there. Um, I've got a little bit of pink around the muzzle. Um, I had the pink that I need to do for his beautiful gums. He had gorgeous gums. Um, there's a coarse pink on the tongue. We've got a nice, beautiful, ruddy pink going through the ears as well. Yeah, and then I'll be really close. I'll be, it was really nice to like do this with you all. Um, being able to share this little commission that I've got going on and that way you guys get to see a couple of the steps um, and kind of get the inspiration behind why I do the line work that I do um, and why I love doing pet portraits as well. So this um, gunner is going to go through several different stages past this because I'll keep adding color and uh, making sure that um, we add some shadows. <coughs> Excuse me. We add shadows and all that fun jazz. Ooh, I have a nice pink right here anyways from my donut dog the other day. Thanks, Lumos. I appreciate it. I don't know if we could get that link up in chat again um, for the... I don't want to get it wrong, so I'm going to keep reading off a piece of paper. Um, helping Bull Terriers Worldwide. If you guys want to um, see what they're all about, be sure to check out their Facebook page. And if you feel compelled to help them and support them in any way, wherever you want to help them for, um, I encourage you to do so really nice people I'm very I'm very grateful that I get to do this because like I said there's just some people that you meet in this world that you're just like you just can't help yourself you just like them So I'm adding some 
happy bright pink because dogs ears do um, what our fingers do if you hold your fingers up to light they'll actually the, your fingertips will glow um, and depending on what kind of light you hold them up to they'll glow red because your fingers are full of blood vessels same thing with puppy dog ears if you put a light up behind your puppy dog ears and your puppy has light fur like Gunnar does um, you'll get to see all those blood vessels so it will show up pink and um, I'm just gonna add a little more pink than he would actually have in real life because he's adorable there's some things that are just fun to do just add that little bit of pink to it because who doesn't love rubbing your dog's ears which are usually like the softest place I found out on most puppies they're their ears ears are super soft just like the top of their heads are super soft So I'm actually not going to add pink on his tongue right here um, because this is a shadow. I really want um, this to be so dark that it really makes his gums like pop and give that color kind of a glow, especially since when I add pink here, it'll like be a pink gray color. It'll be more neutral than actually pink pink. So a trick that I'll do to um, just let your eyes know that like, oh, look at those beautiful canines he has. So that's one way I can do it. But I will add a little bit of pink to his tongue right here. Right here at the end of his tongue. Because it would glow pink right at the end. So like I said, some of his deepest shadows will be his tongue right here. Also will be um, from this part back, um, and this beautiful curvature right here through his jawline um, this will all be super dark so um, but it also make all of these other colors just come really forward as we start to add them if you'd like to see more progress on Gunner and where I'm going with him as I work with him over the weekend um, be sure to follow me on social medias you can always find me on Facebook and Instagram at CNR Art. I also um, post things to if you'd like to find more uh, streams like this or are interested in seeing more of my work, you can always follow me here on Twitch. You can give a little heart there in the corner, give it a press, and that way you can also follow me on Twitch as well. I always do updates on my schedule, on my Twitter page, not to be confused with Twitch, because I do it all the time. Ah, social medias. And as of this week, I started a Reddit page. I don't know how to use Reddit, but I'm going to figure it out. So as soon as I do, I'll let you know where I am on Reddit as well. If you have any suggestions of what I should be doing, um, things I should be reading on Reddit, just let me know. And also, if you want even more fun, I do have a Discord page. Discord is a really great way for our communities to get together and talk about things, whatever, whatever we want to. I have several different subcategories. I do post art on there. Um, I get sneak peeks to things. I let you guys know, especially if you're on my Discord, if I've got a sale going on or if I have new merch in my store. You're going to also be the first one to know because you're on my Discord page. So if you want to follow me there, you can do that as well. Let's see. Did I, did I cover everything? Redbubble. We'll cover that too while we're at it. Um, if you'd like to support me and my channel, of course, please do press that heart button here on Twitch because it does give me a lot of support and I really do appreciate it. If you would like to do even more support and would like to maybe have some of my art on like a cell phone case or a laptop cover 
or perhaps depending on what image it is, like a t-shirt, um, be sure to check out my Redbubble page. You can find it on my website, which of course is Senor Art, just like my channel here on Twitch. You can find the tab there. Just click on it, it takes you directly to my, um, my own special page there on Redbubble as well. So I'm at a beautiful stopping point with Gunner, and I just wanna say that I'm really grateful to be doing this pet portrait with you guys. I'm glad I got to talk about my process with you. Thank you for just handling the emotional me, because I was a little emotional tonight. Um, I did really great, I didn't cry. So um, I'm really proud of myself. However, um, Gunner is very, this is very special. I love doing pet portraits. I love working with uh, organizations. Let me look it up one more time to make sure I don't mess it up. Helping Bull Terriers Worldwide. Just don't want to mess up the title because it is very special. Um, and yeah, if nothing else, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Be sure that if you can and you feel motivated to, support your local rescue groups. What they do is amazing and how they help animals is amazing. And if you've got a puppy dog at home, give them an extra squeeze for me. If you got any kind of pet at home, give them a skirch. Get, play with them. Give them their favorite to kind of treats, toys. And just know that there's, there's nothing quite like having a pet loving you. So thank you guys for joining me. And I will see you next week. I'll see you on Monday. And we'll do another mini illustration at 7.30 Eastern, per the usual. So let me find that in card, tell you guys bye. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me find, ah, there we go. There's that in card. There we go. Thanks guys so much for joining me this evening and I'll see you guys on Monday, 7.30 Eastern. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys are the best. Bye.